adventure not, I'm not afraid to admit I'm wild about the wild things and I'm proud of it I'm just a simple case, open and shut No doubt about it, I'm a nature nut Today we'll go bird watching, tomorrow we'll catch toads The next day we'll take photographs of bugs along the road I never get the feeling that I'm in a rut that's why I'm a nature nut Well, I'm a nature nut I'm not afraid to admit I'm wild about the wild things And I'm proud of it I'm just a simple case Open and shut No doubt about it I'm a nature nut Hey there, nature nuts. How you doing? Feeling a bit toasty? Well, it's time peel off the winter wear and adapt ourselves to the climate of the Hawaiian Islands once more. On the big island of Hawaii, the most recently formed of all the Hawaiian Islands, and, oh, it's fascinating here. It's not only fascinating to explore the theme of the creation of new land, but also the theme of the creation of new species. So, I'm ready to, uh, to get into it. I'll tell you one thing, though. Most people, when they visit Hawaii, they stay down low near the coast in the resort areas. That's, uh, that's kind of a waste of time for a naturalist like me because it's not natural down there. The remaining native Hawaiian flora and fauna is primarily in the high elevation areas. So we're going up country and we're going to explore what remains of the fantastic native fauna and flora of Hawaii. What do you think? I think it's a great idea. And I'm feeling way more comfortable now that I got that uh, winter gear off, too. Oh, yeah. Don't go mistaking me for a nene. I'm a Canada goof, and I'm proud of it. Oh, what a beautiful goose. Man, you know, as a Canadian bird watcher, everywhere I go, I find myself apologizing for the behavior of the Canada goose. They're beautiful birds, but they have this really rotten habit of taking over city parks and golf courses. But here in Hawaii, well, there are no Canada geese. Instead, we get this gorgeous, elegant thing, the uh, nene, the Hawaiian goose. And it's interesting that, in fact, this is a close relative of the Canada goose. And the story, as far as biologists have been able to reconstruct it, goes like this. A few million years ago, one or more geese flew over to the Hawaiian Islands. They were undoubtedly blown off course, or they were just mixed up birds. And they were the beginnings of the, uh, of the Nene population. Now that bird probably looked a lot more like a Canada goose than like a Nene, and really technically we should think of it as the ancestor of both the Nene and the, uh, and the modern Canada goose. But here on the islands, they diverged. They became their own species, their own separate entity. As you can see looking at the goose, from about the neck back, they look a lot like Canada geese, sort of a grayish brown on the back and a, and a white rump. But the neck itself, instead of having the white cheek patch of a Canada goose, they have this streaked appearance at a distance. If you look at them up close, well, it's actually, the, the feathers are actually kind of pleated. It's a very unusual arrangement and very beautiful. They also have, if you look at their feet, uh, and ignore those leg bands. They're, they're, uh, there are so few of these geese that just about every one is banded just to keep track of them. But the feet have uh, very little webbing for a goose. That's because they don't get much of a chance to swim. They're, uh, they're an upcountry, high elevation bird, and they spend most of their time walking around on lava rocks and browsing on these low grasses and other plants. So, uh, so that's their, I mean, that's their habitat. They're a strange, strange goose, but a beautiful goose. And when you, uh, when you hear them call, they sound a lot like a Canada goose as well. It's a, it's a remarkable bird, almost extinct in the 40s and 50s, brought back from the brink by uh, conservation measures and captive breeding. And now there are hundreds of them, but still not enough to get them off the endangered species list. It is, however, 
the state bird of Hawaii. They're very proud of the nene, and I think it's a beautiful thing. The nene, or Hawaiian goose. Lovely. In Hawaii, most bird watchers use Hawaiian names, not English or scientific names. Well, how's that for a heartwarming scene? A couple of little blunt-nosed weevils in the curl of a leaf. Beautiful. And you know, on uh, island situations like this, many of the weevils, in fact many of the beetles in general, are going to be flightless. They don't have any wings anymore because the uh, fully winged individuals have a bad tendency to get blown away from their island and not to leave any survivors. So it's a mountain tops and island. You often find weevils with uh, with no wings. Now I'm not really in the mood to uh, check out these weevils and see if they have no wings because they look kind of comfortable right now in their little leaf curl. Of course, I could tell you that the smallest one is the lesser of the two weevils, but you already heard that joke. I know that. I can tell you that uh, it's important for everyone to ponder the problem of weevils. It's a, kind of an obscure theological joke. Oh, I know what I can tell you. I can tell you that many weevil grubs, when they're when they're uh, little baby weevils, they live underground and they feed on roots. Those are the roots of all weevils. Funny is the roots of all weevils. Oh yeah, that's great. Now I'll also tell you that there's a good reason they don't make these antique binocular magnifying glasses anymore. They're really hard on the human brain. Whoa. You know what I'm looking for? I'm looking for happy face spiders. Native Hawaiian spiders with a happy face pattern on their abdomen, much like this. They live on the undersides of leaves, and uh, I can't find one. I don't know. I'd say the nature not location rating for happy face spiders right now? Sad. this for desolation. Hoo -hoo, boy, this lava flow occurred in July of 1974. Back then I was enjoying my summer vacation, looking forward to grade 11. The world seemed to hold untold promise in those days, and I'm sure so did this brand new piece of land. And look, it's starting to realize some of that promise already. There are plants, colonizing the lava, there's the world's weeest fern right there. Tiny little thing. Ferns are really common in Hawaii and they were probably some of the first plants to reach the islands as they came volcanically bubbling up from the sea because fern spores are so tiny they can be blown huge distances on the wind. They, uh, they can grow right here on the open lava because the lava is very porous, it's very weak rock and it does trap little bits of moisture. There's a lot of rain here, and there's a lot of minerals in the, in the lava as well that become available to the plants. So it's not like most other parts of the world where you need lichens to grab onto the rocks, bust them up, make a little bit of soil, and then you can get other sorts of plants. I mean, there are some lichens here and there. You'll see them growing on the rock, but they're not the sort of flat rock lichens that we're used to back home. They're fuzzy lichens, like the ones you see on tree branches. Very interesting. Now there's also uh, some other plants growing on the lava, including ohia trees. Interesting things, a nice native tree with a beautiful red blossom, very tightly linked to uh, a number of Hawaiian critters. And speaking of critters, I gotta tell you, this is a lousy place for critters. Terrible! In most volcanic situations, the first critters to colonize are spiders. I've seen a few spider webs on the ground, but I haven't seen spiders themselves. All spiders are uh, predators, by the way. I don't know what they eat when they get out on that ground, probably other spiders, and I guess bugs that are blown out onto the lava, the drift, so to speak. But the fact remains, it's a lousy place for critters, so why don't we let this, uh, let this place perk up a bit, leave her for a couple thousand years, and go looking for critters somewhere else. That's my plan. I don't know about you. 
The Big Island of Hawaii is geologically the youngest of all the Hawaiian islands and therefore has the most exposed lava. Hey, that's a Hawaiian hawk. Look at that. Yahoo! That's Beautio solitarius, the only hawk native to Hawaii, only hawk in Hawaii. It's a great looking bird. It is to the North American red-tailed hawk what the nene is to the Canada goose. Dark face too, beauty -o. Okay, well let me uh, tell you a little story here. You know there's only two kinds of butterflies that are native to the Hawaiian Islands. Yep, two. And I'll tell you how one of them got here. Boy, seems like it was a couple million years ago, but I'll bet it's only half that. I was sitting around with some of my buddies down by the shore, and we're making a canoe. We're just scooping out this old log, and we're just talking and stuff. We're making this for our buddy Doug. Uh, Doug was a good guy. I liked Doug a lot, but uh, he was in trouble with the, with the locals because his name was funny. There's no Ds or Gs in the Hawaiian alphabet, so they wanted to deport him, send him off to Tonga. So we're gonna put him in this canoe with as much as, you know, enough macadamia nuts to last him for a while, and he was, he was in a little bit of a bad mood about that. Anyway, it was the first canoe of its kind. That's why we called it the dugout canoe, because we wanted to get dug out of the place. <laughs> and then across the ocean comes this little butterfly, just flipping and flapping. Like I say, Doug's in a bad mood, so he starts yelling and swearing at it, and telling it to go back where it came from in a little varmint, and there's only room for one butterfly in this part of the world, and that's the Kamehameha. Named after Kamehameha the Great as a good king boy. I like to like hanging around with him. He's good darts, good dart players. Except he use those big ones. Throw you right in the volcano if you got you do. But anyway, yeah, so this butterfly goes flapping, deeks him out, and does a couple little turns, and Boy, Doug was mad, and that's when he got his fly swatter stuck in the magma. That's lava, liquid lava come flowing by. Caught fire right in his hand. Holy crowley. So then he runs into his shack, gonna get himself another one, forgets that he's carrying the burning one, sets his shack on fire. Big conflagration of flames, and it was right up to the top of the palm trees, I'll tell you. Burned her to the crisp. After that, we started calling them little butterflies the black shack burning butterflies. But that was long and complicated. Nobody could remember that. So they now just call them blackburns. Blackburns. Wherever I see them, I think of Doug. <laughs> I hope he's doing all right in Tonga. face spiders. The nature not location rating is still sad. <laughs> oh. The blackburn butterfly is now officially called the Hawaiian blue, much to my personal chagrin. finest ukuleles are always made from koa wood. I think this is real koa wood, this wood here. This is real maple wood. I don't know for sure though because this is a German made ukulele. These are koa trees behind me, the white barked ones with the banana shaped leaves and the little yellow spherical flowers. And koa, well it's still being logged to a certain extent. It's very popular wood for not only ukuleles but also for furniture and novelties, things like pen and pencil sets and things like that. But it's not really a big threat to the native habitats of Hawaii anymore. It's, uh, it's a pretty, uh, pretty minor thing. So I like koa wood, and if you find that you're lucky enough to own a koa made ukulele, my advice to you is to play it for all it's worth. Oh, and by the way, never say ukulele, always say ukulele. Okay, well let's do a little more Hawaiian bird watching now. We're uh, living on the edge. Look at that beautiful abyss out behind. 
It's gorgeous. We're on uh, on the edge of the Kilauea caldera in a forest of Ohia lehua trees, or most people just call them Ohia trees. Very good uh, bird watching tree because the red blossoms are loaded with nectar and many of the birds in this part of the world, that's what they do all day. They just go from one Ohia tree to the other looking for blossoms and sticking their little beaks right into the, into the flowers and sipping up the nectar. Now the most common bird here is this beautiful red one right here. That is the Apapane. And the Apapane is, well, I mean, have a look at it. Just appreciate the gorgeousness of that bird for a second. Red with a white rump and darkish wings. It's a really pretty bird. It's part of the Hawaiian honeycreeper group, the family of birds that's found only here in Hawaii. And they have a fascinating story. They've often been compared to the Galapagos finches. You know the story of the Galapagos finches. Darwin goes to the Galapagos. He sees all these finches with different shapes of bills and they're, um, they're all clearly closely related to one another. And he reasons that one ancestral species had radiated, so to speak, to become all of these different, uh, different sorts of finches. Well, if he had come to Hawaii, instead of going to the Galapagos, he would have gotten the same message, maybe even more so, because the Hawaiian honeycreepers show an even broader range of bill shapes. I'd love to show you that, but the fact is that most of the Hawaiian honeycreepers, or at least I shouldn't say most, maybe, I don't know, half of the Hawaiian honeycreepers are now extinct. They started going extinct with the arrival of um, avian malaria, an introduced disease that just wiped out birds left, right, and center. And then to add insult to injury, uh, introduced birds were competing with the native birds and there was a certain amount of habitat degradation. So a great deal of that diversity, fantastic diversity is not there for us to look at. But if you were to, uh, if you were to examine the whole spectrum of bill shapes and uh, different adaptations in Hawaiian honeycreepers, you would be amazed, as would have old Charles Darwin if he'd come here instead of uh, the Galapagos. But today, what we have is the Apapani, kind of a middle-sized, middle-billed thing that, that's uh, oh, a gorgeous bird. And what a lovely sound, too. I mean, it's, it's got a tremendous repertoire of robin-like and warbler-like calls warms my heart. The only other bird that's really common here, have a look over there, there's two of them snuggling up together. Those are Japanese white eyes. Japanese white eye is an introduced bird. It's from Japan, as you might expect. Zosterops japonicus. You know, when I first started bird watching in Hawaii, I just hated all those introduced birds. They really bothered me because I felt so bad about all the uh, native birds that had gone extinct. Now I've come to, well, I've come to sort of accept that the damage has for the most part been done. I'm trying to say, don't just come here to feel guilty. Have a look at those white eyes and enjoy them for what they are. It's not their fault they're here. And they're cute. They're very cute. Look at them. Japanese white eyes. Well, I see it from your clothes, you are a cowgirl And it figures that you've never been to town So I'll play to you a tune on my ukulele To send you hopping up the country in a dressing gown We were hopping up the country together Hopping up the country, it was like a roll of dice. We were hopping up the country in all kinds of weather. Yeah, we're hopping up the country of life. Well, goodbye to all the beach chairs and the sunblock. Hello to all those ko and ohia trees. Send a postcard if you find the kind of hot rocks That send you hopping up the country with me Hopping up the country 
up the country without warning Left the road map in the laundry chute by the pool Then we got lost among the curvatures of the morning Until the country found the courtesy to be cruel We were hopping up the country together Yeah, we were hopping up the country It was like a roll of dice We were hopping up the country In all kinds of weather Yeah, we're hopping up the country of life Oh man, after a whole day of searching, I finally figured it out. I know where the happy face spiders are. And you know, these days in Hawaii, everybody knows about happy face spiders. You see them on t-shirts and postcards and books, but nobody's ever seen one. They've got great PR. What you do, here's the secret. You gotta go out at night, you gotta go out in the high country, and you've gotta look for this kind of leaf. It's about the size of a big uh, soup spoon or a serving spoon, and you look under the leaves, and boof, there they are. Now, they're not on every plant like this. In fact, when you find a good plant, you can find quite a few of them. Uh, let's see here. There's another one right there. Look at that. Hey, what am I telling you? You have to remember, when you find a happy face spider, don't be surprised if it doesn't have a happy face. They're very variable. Some of them have uh, a full happy face. Some of them have just little tiny markings. Some of them have a red blotch. Some of them don't have a red blotch and the smile. And they've actually been the subject of quite a bit of scientific research uh, with respect to the genetic control of these color polymorphisms, as they say. On some islands, they're uh, strongly sex-linked, some of the patterns, on some they're not, and some they're controlled by a single allele, and some they're controlled by multiple alleles. Hey, you genetics fans, you look into it. But for the rest of us, it's just exciting to see a happy face spider. They are members of the comb clawed spider family. That's the same family that includes the black widow, but that doesn't mean they're dangerous. These are not dangerous spiders at all. There are lots and lots of uh, perfectly harmless comb clawed spiders. Oh, here's another thing about them. They do have a happy part of their character. Um, back there on the trail, just saw a nice little family scene. The mother happy face spider looks after her babies after they hatch. She catches them food. She uh, helps them uh, through the first part of their life. And it's heartwarming, don't you think? So there you go. Success at last. The neatest parts of the Hawaiian experience are often subtle things that are hard to get a uh, hard to get a handle on. And the nut rating for this location, totally happy. Big smiles all around. Well, it looks like we're just about out of time, but hey, we're surrounded right now by the EEV, some of my favorite birds on this planet. It's another species of Hawaiian honey creeper, a native. Hawaiian bird. So what better note could we have to end on than to see the EEV with that long, beautiful decurved bill and gorgeous colors. I love the EEV. My wife loves the EEV. In fact, we used to have a cockatiel we named EEV. That's just the kind of people we are. We're nature nuts, nature macadamias, and we hope you are too. Have another look at this bird. Gorgeous. Same time each and every week, uncensored and uncut. No doubt about it, I'm a nature nut. 